Hello, hello. Thank you for listening to A Glimpse of the Kingdom. I am David Pendergrass. I hope you are well today. I am going to today cover what I consider to be healthy belief number four for marriages. Healthy belief number four. I hope you're listening to these. I hope they're beneficial to you for marriages and for relationships. Healthy belief number four is this. A healthy marriage exists when both persons interpret circumstances or events well. A healthy marriage exists when both persons interpret circumstances or events well. So the belief is that it's my job as an individual in a marriage, it's my job to interpret it well. And by that I mean process circumstances and events emotionally, to use a term commonly, to metabolize circumstances or events, process them, and let it be part of my character and then move on. So I interpret them well. Uh, and that's, that is very important, both in the individual's lives and the spouse's, an individual spouse's life, and also in, as a relationship, like an individual, it's very important for an individual to understand they have a healthy uh, definition or mold of themselves and how for the couple, as I did in healthy belief number three. And this one, it's very similar. That is, it's individual responsibility and it's as an important as a marriage is very important. Now you need to understand it's very different. Okay. The circumstances that we go through or events that we go through in life are not the same as their interpretation of those events. They're simply not the same. And healthy people understand that. They grasp and they fully accept the fact that your circumstances and how you interpret those circumstances are not synonymous. We do not always have control over our events or our circumstances. We do always have control over our interpretation of those things. For example, if I got bumped into by a person on the side of the road, uh, on the sidewalk, that's the event. I got bumped in. How I interpret it is completely up to me. It happened against my will, perhaps. I I was nearby a person. I could interpret as someone being a bully, as someone being mean, someone being careless, someone being rude. Someone's a racist. Someone was not paying attention at all. Maybe someone uh, was blind. Maybe someone was blind. Maybe they were blind and deaf. Maybe they're. There's all kinds of reasons why it occurred, between being an accident, being intentional, whatever the case may be. But how I interpret it is completely up to me. A very common problem that I meet when I do individual counseling with people is their inability to distinguish between what happened to them in the past and what's happening to them right now. And their capacity to process what is happening, their interpretation of what has happened. It's very important. Healthy people understand the distinction. If we're not careful and deliberate, we will allow our interpretation of these events to redefine who we are and what we expect from life and God. If we're not very careful and deliberate, it, it, these events redefine us. And what do we expect in life? And they go to our beliefs, which I talked about before, already in other podcasts. They affect what we believe about the world, about life, about others, about God, about whatever. Moreover, our individual histories, especially from childhood, they greatly affect our marriage. It's imperative to heal as quickly as often as you can from your individual wounds, both for your own healing and for a healthy relationship. It is so important to heal as quickly and as often as you can from your individual wounds, both just for your own well-being, but also, of course, to have a healthy relationship. Now, I'm going to talk about, like I did before when I talked about having a healthy definition of yourself. First, I'm going to start with individual need for this, and then I'll talk about the corporate need as a marriage, because they, they're very related. They're not the same, but they're very related, and you need to talk about both, And it seems to me. You need to understand that you and I have gone through all kinds of events in life. I think of it like this sometimes. Uh, you can any analogy you want to, but if I'm driving my truck down the road, and let's say it goes through the, the weeks or months or years, I look back and realize there's all kinds of small dents, and there's dirt, and there's pine straw, and there's mud. And let's say I don't get it cleaned off. Some of it falls off, but I look back on life at this truck, and I go, my goodness, I, I just look back at him. I'm like, what happened? Dad, how did this happen to your truck? And I go, I don't know, I just wear and tear it's just the wear and tear, the slow wear and tear of life driving the truck. There's a paint chipped off. Maybe there's a little rust. It's just the wear and tear of life. Well, the wear and tear on your truck can be gradual and subtle. Sometimes it's big. So that dent, that dent was there because of a car wreck. I remember that one exactly. I never got it fixed. 
Well, that's when the window broke. Or there's a crack. There's a, a lot of people drive around with, you might have one right now on your windshield. There's a crack in the glass. And you've now got it fixed. But every single time you look through the glass, <laughs> especially if it breaks right in your the part where you see out the window, that's very frustrating. You can see where a crack is. So you can you always remember, oh, yeah, a rock or something hit my glass. You're always reminded of that event. You and I are like that. We go through life slowly getting dent up, chin to all. I mean, just things affect us emotionally and mentally in our belief system and our spiritual life. They affect us over time. And so much what affects us over time and how we see the world, our worldview, our emotional well-being uh, has been slowly changing all through the years. Sometimes we can point out particular things that happen, big events that happen, or, or, or I might say more significant things that happen, like the time the glass was hit by that rock or that time I had a car wreck. Sometimes we remember times, events we went through, we were fired or we were hired or we had a child or we had a miscarriage or we married or divorced or the first time we dated, the first time we kissed, uh, the first time our house was robbed, the first time my mom and dad said they're leaving and they're getting a divorce. Uh, we have event, big events and there's a, a lot of other sm minor events. And all these events, all these circumstances, whether we did it ourselves, it was our fault. Like we made bad choices and you shouldn't have been drinking and driving. Or you were smoking that thing or whatever it is you did or whatever bad choice or good choice, whatever it is you did, it affected over the years that it's affected you. Now, of course, sometimes it can affect us. We can interpret events very well. Oftentimes, we've not interpreted them at all. We've not processed what's happened to us. We don't pause to look back at the truck and go, look at the truck. Look at it for a little bit. Look at it, look at the condition it's in. Many of us don't do that. We were, it's a very common uh, critique in psychology that people don't are very bad at mindfulness. That a lot of people, at least in, the, in America, they're having a hard time pausing, reflecting on their own emotional state. How am I? How am I? Can I get outside of myself and look at myself? We call that the observer self. Can I get outside of myself and notice things about me, things I like, things I don't like, things I want to change, things I don't want to change? And and that's what we need to do. Healthy people are able to look outside themselves and observe themselves. We can't do that perfectly, of course not, but we can do a good job at it enough to get some real good healing done. And sometimes we need a therapist or a third party or a spouse sometimes to help us. But I'm telling you, if you haven't already, you need to spend some time in your life, if you want to be healthy, reflecting on what's happened to you, and, and particularly, you might think, be on more significant decisions you've made. And here's one reason, because it's just healthy. Uh, the other reason is because so much of the behavior that people are living out through right now that's toxic, particularly in toxic relationships, they're really just, at minimum, one spouse living out woundedness from his or her past within the marriage. So many issues you face in a toxic relationship, they're really just living out woundedness. And the other spouse, the one who's being acted on by the wounded spouse, gets hurt, angry, resentful at the wounded spouse's hypersensitivity or seemingly crazy behavior, whatever it might be. And so, so many times what's toxic is one of the person has been very wounded. There's a, cr there's a crack in the windshield. And they don't know it. Or maybe they do know it. They never dealt with it. They never went back and interpreted it. And this is easier if you're watching me do this because I can draw this on a whiteboard. But what's so, another point I'm making right now is what's so amazing about this is that these toxic relationships that seem to be, or in your own, your own life, maybe you're doing tox toxic behavior to yourself. There's behavior you're doing and you're like, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm stuck in this. I know this isn't good for me, but I'm still doing it. There's all kinds of reasons that can happen. But again, one of the major reasons that typically happens is because you're living out your body, your psyche, your brain, your mind, you're living out some kind of woundedness, some kind of event or circumstance happened, and you never interpreted it. You never metabolized it. You never processed it. And if I had a whiteboard, I would show you this on the board. Put one dot, put, call it E. That's the event. On the dot, and then I might circle it. And that's my interpretation of it. And that's it. So you can, and here's what's brilliant. What's brilliant is, you can't change the event, nope. But as the years go by, you can't go back and change it. Can't, can, we can't time travel. Not yet. I don't think we ever will be able to. What we can do is change the interpretation of the event. So, for example, let's say you got in a car wreck 
and you, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't matter whose fault it is. That's a that's a traumatic thing to go through, particularly if you're younger. Let's say it was a really rough, real bad wreck. You might have come to believe, interpret because of that event, that you're always unsafe. And you always feel some anxiety. So you don't turn the radio up like you used to, or you're always gripping it 10 and 2 on the steering wheel. You, you're going to make choices because of that. And so you've come to associate driving the vehicle with being extra dangerous, where let's imagine I've never been in a wreck, and I, I, I've never been in a bad wreck. I personally haven't. Well, I don't interpret, interpret driving with being very, very anxious because I've never been in a bad wreck. Well, you might, I might, in counseling, you might say, well, yeah, so what? And that's the, you know, it's just got the, the cross I have to bear. Well, first off, that's not how it works. Jesus said, pick up your cross. It was not thrust upon you. That means you do it willfully. And, and you'll never hear that people do that well. They never say, they always say, oh, I guess it's my cross. What they mean is, I guess it's something I didn't want shoved on top of me. That is precisely what Jesus did not mean in Mark 8, 38. In any case, it's not your cross I have to bear. What it means is you've not properly healed. And you can, in counseling, reinterpret that event till you change the belief you have about and beliefs you have about being in a car. You can, you can read, you can change it. You might need therapy. Well, so what? Maybe some, maybe you read some books. So what? I mean, you can heal. You can change. You can't change the event. That dot stays on there on your in the history of of you. Yep, it happened. But how you interpret that event can be changed. And so many people in life who are living out toxic behaviors right now in their own lives, and certainly when it comes to relationships, are really just people who have not gone back and reinterpreted uh, or interpreted for the very first time what occurred to them, what happened to them. And that's a big deal. And that can be healed. So as I've emphasized at this point, there's a lot that you can do individually. And that's where therapy and counseling and good reflection, good journaling can really help you. I'm going to transition now to what affects the marriage. It affects the marriage. And this part two, you might say, of, the, of this part of this podcast is to emphasize that aspect of it. And a lot of times in marriage relationships, when you have a person who goes, my spouse is doing X, Y, Z, and they come across as kind of crazy, or they're hypersensitive, or they're this, or they're this, or they're this, and, or I feel extra anxious. And a lot of times what's going on is just because you have not dealt with your past well, or your spouse hasn't dealt with his or her past well. And again, those interpretations, how you process those past events can always be redeemed. They can always be changed. Here's an example of, I mean, this just happens all the time. But here's an example of something where a person, uh, it's an example of what I'm talking about here. One woman uh, that, I, uh, that I was at a marriage conference, the one that I was hosting, she came to mind. And she said, uh, she said that she always felt very responsible for her husband's activities. Very responsible. She felt very nervous, very anxious for him all the time, where he was going, what he was doing. She felt very much responsible for him. And she'd get very, very nervous if she didn't know where he was or maybe she, he was going to be hurt, all that kind of stuff. Well, when anyone feels overly responsible, overly anything, whenever they're overly something, maybe they're highly anxious, something's going on internally within the person. There's a reason why, and almost always, when a person feels it about someone else, my first question, of course, I'm always wondering is, is the other, does the other, is the other person that irresponsible? So for example, if she said, I feel very responsible for this person, my husband, and I do so because he has a pattern of reckless behavior and shooting people and murdering or raping or having affairs or whatever. Then I would say is, oh, you feel anxious because you're going to be hurt again or what? I mean, that makes a lot of sense. But in this man, he didn't show any kind of signs of being irresponsible. And to confirm that, you can ask him. I can say, ask her, is he the kind of person who's irresponsible? And I should go, well, in general, no. And I'll, okay, well, that's the case. I guarantee you it's not because of him. It's something from her past. So what I said was, I asked her, who were you responsible for as a child? And she thought for a moment and she said, my mom. I was always responsible for picking up the pieces of her mess. Now, as a therapist, a counselor, I immediately go, I know that's what's going on in her. This is exactly what's going on. She is living out the woundedness of her mom and her, what would they call being parentified as a child. And she's taken out, she feels that responsibility on her husband. So what I did was I, I had them hold hands and I, I, in therapy, I call it knee to knee. I had them hold hands, go knee to knee, look her in her eyes. And I said, don't look away. I asked her, do not look away. Look at, look at his eyes, even though this will be emotionally to hear and I had him, the husband, repeat after me. Look her in the eyes, and I need you to say this to her. Say this. 
I am not your mom. And she immediately started to weep. She wept. See, she was living out her past in her present. Her husband didn't have to, didn't have a mess to fix. He didn't have a mess to fix, but it didn't matter because she felt the need to feel responsible for him because she grew up with the incessant feeling shoved onto her by her mom. She was treating her husband as if he were her mom. And what she needs to do is heal from her past wounds that she should, so that she no longer puts her mom's needs onto her husband. And if we're not careful and deliberate, we will allow our, our interpretation of these events in our lives to redefine the relationship, and then it'll destroy the relationship. It can cause rifts. So if you bring your past woundedness, unresolved grief, things you have not looked back and interpreted and metabolized and processed, it, if you've not done that well, then you have a high chance of hurting your marriage now, and vice versa. If you are married to a spouse who had some uh, powerful events gone on in his or her past and they've not healed from them, it could be other reason why your relationship won't work well. So, for example, here, here's some big events. If you don't if you don't define or redefine these well and make sure they don't control you, they're going to hurt the relationship. Are you a husband who used to be successful and provide because you lost your job? Is that part of your new definition that you used to be successful? You used to be handsome? Are you the wife who used to be hot, but now you're just obese? Now you're just fat and ugly? Whatever the words you say to yourself, whatever you say to yourself. We used to be the happy family, but now deep in sorrow because of the trauma we experienced. We used to be a happy family, but now we're no longer happy because my, my uh, brother and my sister died when I was 12 or whatever. What is it? What are the most significant events that have occurred in your marriage or maybe even dating? There's some negative events and positive, and negative events tend to have more negative impact, but negative events like the death of a child, maybe a miscarriage, or maybe an older child. Uh, what about a life-threatening illness? Fired from a job? Did you have an affair? Struggle with an addiction? Moved to a really different place? Was there a car accident? Did you go to the military or war, get wounded? Think of these kind of things. Are there any negative events in your life or in your marriage what about positive things like the birth of children, promotions? Uh, maybe it's and that now because you have a higher paying job, a spouse can stay at home and I have to work. So it's positive, but it takes a toll. It's a stress, new stress. Uh, I mean, you can think of negative things like the COVID-19 hit. Maybe the positive thing is it's done other great things. Now you have more children because you got so much time. You have, to have a lot of sex and you have kids. I don't know. So these events occur like dinging up the truck. They occur to the relationship and relationships change because of it. Like the truck analogy, the truck appearance changes. Relationships change like that. We need to pause in relationships. Healthy marriages have healthy beliefs of saying, you know what? These events are happening. Some I caused, some I did not. Some are negative and some are positive. And I need to make sure I'm interpreting these events well. What do I want to take away from that event? What do I want to take away from that circumstance? You must adapt together. Process the emotions together. That's what happens. Relationships change because you go through these events. Well, you got to adapt to them. You process the emotions together. You interpret it together. And you go back to your values for your life and your marriage. No matter what happens. When relationships don't do that, when one person might do it fairly well and go to the therapist and heal from all this and move on with life, and the other one says, I'm not moving on. They just don't care at all that our child died. They just don't, they never ever weep like I do all the time. Well, some, some, part, maybe one spouse has just healed a lot more because he or she has been much more proactive in healing. It doesn't mean they didn't care about the loss of the child. Maybe they've just worked harder at processing the emotions and interpreting the event in a way that uh, helps them move on with life as much as possible. You don't go to a, there's no normal, but there's this different. You're processing emotions and you're adapting and you get going. Healthy relationships do that together. They do it together. And that's one reason why so many couples actually get divorced when there is a death of a child. It's so sad and so overwhelming and the arguments and fighting and they take out their sadness and rage against each other and they don't process the emotions 
together. And by together, I don't mean you have to do it simultaneously or have to go to the exact same therapist or that you heal at the same time. I just mean you're both committed to healing at the same time. You're in this together. You're a support for each other. See, the encouragement is, as I wrap up, when your spouse causes painful events in your life and marriage, you can heal from those wounds. You can process these pains and not allow them to define your life or marriage now. Now, how is that? How is it if a spouse did something to me that I can interpret it well? Well, you have to acknowledge the event and acknowledge it. It happened. The opposite of that is called denial. A lot of people love denial. Denial, denial, denial. It never happened. Nope, nope, nope. I don't want to go there. It's too painful. Well, the first step is not living in denial. Acknowledge that it happened. And one way you know you're acknowledging is you say it. Just say it aloud. Uh, Two, you process the feelings together and you support each other emotionally. You, You need to. You process the feelings together. Now, together, I just mean you're on the same, you're going to the same destination. You don't have to be on the exact same path. And it depends on what the issue is. depends on what the event, the painful event might have been something. You lose your job. It might have been one person betrays you. I mean, it just depends on the issue. But your goal as a healthy couple is to support each other emotionally as much as possible. And you work on it together. That's what you do together. And of course, thirdly, you consciously go back to your healthy definition of model which is my healthy belief before, healthy belief number three, and that is you go back and say, I'm not going to let this redefine my marriage. I'm not going to let this redefine my marriage. I'm not, not going to, I want my marriage, or maybe I want this if it's a big positive event. You know what, I'm going to add this to our definition, but we're going to make sure if it's a painful event that you don't let it redefine you. You get outside of the truck, you look back at it, and you observe who you are, what you do, your patterns, your beliefs, you get outside of yourself. Uh, one way, if that's too abstract for you, is to sit with your spouse. Maybe times a good date assignment too. Really, it doesn't take much work. Go on a date. Go to Chick Fil A. Doesn't matter. And say, what do you think of the top five significant events of our marriage, positive or negative? Or have five positive, five negative. Maybe there's only two. And if you're barely dating, there's only one. Uh, whatever it might be, just write them down and think about it. And as soon as you write them down, ask this question: Do you think we fully heal from that. Do you think there's any, that there's any baggage from that we need to deal with? No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, wait a second. If you said like that, the answer is probably yes, we do. <laughs> it sounds like you're trying to move over too quickly. Does it make you very, very anxious to bring up that subject? And very anxious, very sad, very angry. If there's a very there or even a, a fairly good, that means, yeah, we got some more work to do. Now, maybe your spouse can't help that much because your spouses don't have to be a therapist. But the spouse can be a support and say, look, if, if it's that big a deal still, then I fully support you going to a therapist. I fully support you going to a counselor or getting the work done. Or let's get those books. They're free from a library. Uh, I mean, let's do the work. Let's get at it. I want to make sure we do this together because we're in this together. If you don't do it together and you're like, never mind, never mind, never mind. Well, then you come and talk to people like me. You headed to divorce court. You will. I mean, that's what... I mean, one of the reasons you get married, ideally, is you find a person who loves you and they want to help process things together. Well, if you're in a relationship with a person, you don't want to process things with them ever. That's a bad sign. It's a bad sign. It can be changed. It can be redeemed and healed. But it is a bad sign. You need to talk to a therapist right away if you don't give a rip. If you're healing, if you don't care if your spouse is healing, um, those are signs that something's going on. So think about those things. Discuss those things. What are the major events in your marriage? Uh, have you fully processed these events? Uh, think of it this way. Do they have any power over you now? Do they cause you anxiety, grief, or anger in your marriage now? Do you find yourself thinking about those events often or mentioning them in the marriage? Um, those kind of things. Are there ways uh, that you interpret those events you wish you could change? Yeah, you know, ever since I thought about the car wreck, it makes me nervous. I don't want to be nervous on getting a car anymore. All right, what are we going to do? Let's do this together. We're going to make sure we don't, you're not, you know. I'll be a support. You got to go to therapy or whatever, but let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, What do you need from your spouse, if possible, if at all, to process the emotions of the event? Well, let it go and move forward in health. So those are the kind of questions to ask. So healthy belief number four is a healthy marriage exists when both persons believe they need, they need to interpret circumstances or events very well and metabolize them. And they, they're able to do it together as a couple and move on health in a healthy way. Hope that helps. God bless. See you next time. Well, the conversation isn't finished. You can always reach out to me on social media. Are you on Facebook? 
I am too. At Glimpse of the Kingdom. Glimpse of the Kingdom on Facebook. Be sure to like it and you can see updates there. Also, if you're on Twitter, check me out at at Dr. D. Pendergrass, at Dr. D. Pendergrass, or at Glimpse the King, at Glimpse the King, and I try my best to respond to comments and questions on there as quickly as I can. If you want more, there are many more resources on the podcast and my blog. Go to my website, davidpendergrass.com, davidpendergrass.com, and you can see a full list of the podcast, and my blog is available for free. Are you active in a church right now? I'd be happy to come out to your church and do all kinds of classes and workshops there. Check out davidpendergrass.com, davidpendergrass.com for more information. And may God in his great grace give you even just a glimpse of his kingdom this week. See you next time.